This video was brought to you by Studio Network Solutions, the shared storage choice of media professionals worldwide. Let's shed some light on the new paradigm of working in Premiere Pro introduced with version 14.1, that is, productions. I need to make it clear that in this video I assumed that you already watched my video overview of productions, so click here and check it out. Pause the video and watch this video first. Okay, you're still there? It means you've watched it. Good job! Now it's time for 10 things you need to know when working with productions. Let's cut to number one. Whenever you want to add, remove or modify a master clip effect in a production, you need to open a project that contains that clip in a read and write state. By the way, if you want to watch about project locking, here is the video I made. If the project that contains the file is closed, you can still see effect applied, but you just can't modify it. The fastest way to open the project and to find that particular file is by right-clicking on it and choosing Reveal in Project command. If you want to turn off a master clip in the program monitor without opening another project, you can still do it using the global FX mute. Generate master clips for media command in the edit menu is very useful if you want to migrate a sequence from a production to a traditional project. It has to be used on a selection of clips on a timeline. So whenever you have a production project containing sequences but no master clips and you want to save it in a standalone state, you should select all the clips in a sequence and choose Edit Generate Master Clips for Media. There is a slider in the bottom left corner of the production panel, which you can use to make things bigger and more readable. Simple but still, nice to have. Whenever you want to add a project to your production, you should use Add Project command. You can find it in the production panel menu or when you right-click inside the panel. Then simply choose a project on a disk and Premiere Pro will make a copy of that file and place it in your production. If needed, it will upgrade the project version. Similarly, if you want to make a copy of a project already existing in a production, right-click on that project and choose Make a copy command. Very simple yet useful shortcut. If you hold Ctrl or Command while double-clicking a project, it will be open in read-only state. Studio Network Solutions helps editors around the globe by changing the way they store, organize and share their media. They offer high-quality shared storage hardware and very reliable media management software, plus integrations with your NLE, including Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro 10, Avid and Resolve. What can I say, it's a great product, otherwise I would not contact them, so visit their website for more details. Adobe recommends setting a few things if you're working with productions. Let's list them here. First, in Preferences Media, uncheck the following. Write XMP ID to files on import, write clip markers to XMP, and also enable clip and XMP metadata linking. Next, in Preferences Collaboration, make sure enable project locking is checked. Then enter a username that others will see and recognize when they open a project inside the production. And last but not least, make sure that import workspaces from projects in window workspaces is unchecked. This last setting is very important for productions since you'll be working with a lot of project files and you don't want to reset the workspace every time you import the project into your production. It's actually one of the best practices I'm talking about in my Bulletproof Premiere Pro ebook, which is all about the best practices for stable editing workflow. If that's something you struggle with, you can order your copy and by doing so you support the channel. Whenever Premiere Pro finds duplicated production IDs in the production folder, it will create a TXT file that lists the duplicated projects. This way you can quickly resolve that issue. The TXT file will disappear when the duplicates are gone. Production links any changes in the production panel with a folder on the disk and the other way around. But it looks for Premiere Pro project files only. And while you potentially could add assets to that folder, you should not do it. It's not recommended by Adobe, it will slow down your production and also the files just won't be visible. However, if you're looking for a solution to mirror your folder structure in Premiere Pro, you should check a plugin called Watchtower. It has some powerful features and can be very useful in some workflows. If master clips you want to edit from one timeline to another have been moved from the project they were in, you might be forced to use reassociate master clips command. You can think of it like of link media command, but specifically for the new way of referencing files in productions. 
To use that command, you need to have a selection of clips in question on the timeline. Then you choose a command and now you have to select Premiere Pro project file that contains master clips matching the ones you selected. There is a file with .prodset extension in a root folder of any production. Do not remove or modify this file. It stores production settings and other information Premiere Pro needs to run your production successfully. Now you need to learn about project locking in productions. What states can a project be in? And what can you do in read-only mode? Click video here or another one and see you there.